This video is part of Project Her Story, a collaboration between multiple channels for Women's History Month. Be sure to check it out. Before he was Chinggis Khan, founder of the Mongol Empire, he was Temujin, a young boy abandoned by his tribe. And it was his mother, Hololun, who pulled him through his childhood to his destiny. It is her story we will present today. Most of what we know of Hololun comes from the secret history of the Mongols, the same 13th century Mongolian chronicle which provides so much of Chinggis Khan's youth. We are only provided information on her as it intersects with the lives of her husbands and sons, with inference from what other medieval sources tell us of Mongolian women. Hololun is first mentioned around 1160 moving to Merkit territory with her husband, a Merkit prince named Yeki Chiladu. Around 15 years old and likely from a wealthy family, Hololun was destined to be Yeki Chiladu's chief wife. But the two were spotted by Esuge, a Mongol of the Kiyot Borjigin lineage. Yesuge found Hololun beautiful and ambushed the newlyweds with his brothers. Hololun urged Yeki Chiladu to find another wife and save himself before the raiders killed him. And her final parting gift was her shirt, carrying her scent for Chiladu to remember her by. So Chiladu fled, and Hololun was captured by Yesugai Bator. Yesugai took Hololun as his wife. Not uncommon for a man unable to pay a bride price, but an act to be a catalyst for many grudges. Hololun was made the senior over Esugai's other wife, Sukagil. Senior wives had authority over other women and servants, and in the husband's absence, the senior wife took most responsibilities in managing the camp. With the men out with the herds, a Mongolian woman's duties involved much of the maintenance of the gear, dairy production, cooking and gathering food, sewing clothes, and other day-to-day -day operations. In the roughly ten years Hololun and Esugai were married, they had five children. The first was a boy born around 1162, clutching a blood clot in his fist, Temujin, the future Chinggis Han, and was followed by Khazar, Hashiyun, Temuga, and a daughter, Temulun. Isolated from her family, we have no information on how Hololun got along with her new neighbors. Famous for her resilience and her temper, she must have held her head high making the best of the situation and devoting herself to her children. When Temujin was nine years old, Esugai took him to be married. It was planned to be from Hololun's Olkunut tribe, likely encouraged by Hololun herself to shore up relations since her abduction. On the way, they ended up in a camp of the Ongarad. Perhaps hoping to avoid an awkward meeting with Hololun's relations, Esugai let Temujin choose from the Ongarad, Borte. Too poor for the bride price, Esugai left Temujin to pay it off in labor. Returning alone, Esugai was poisoned by a rival tribe, living long enough to return to Hololun and recall Temujin before succumbing. With Esugai's death, his own children were too young to lead the tribe and too poor in herds. Soon a rival lineage led in abandoning Hololun and her children. Only one, Charcha, tried to stop them and was speared in the back. Hololun took Yesigai's standard and rode to the departing column, shaming some into returning, yet they left again, taking the herds and supplies with them. Yesigai's two widows, with seven young children and no herds, faced a difficult challenge to survive the brutal Mongolian winter. As the secret history of the Mongols describes in a lengthy passage, Lady Hololun was born a clever woman. Along the Onan River, she collected wild fruits, vegetables, roots, and even encouraged her sons to fish, something Mongols rarely did. To feed so many, including her infant daughter Temulun, off so little was a great difficulty, but she did it. Without her tenacity, the children would have perished. Despite her efforts to urge harmony, that they had no friends but their own shadows, she could not prevent the ruthlessness of her eldest son, Temujin. Sukhagel, Yesugai's first wife, had a slightly older boy named Bekter. By Mongolian custom, when Bekter was old enough, he could take Hololun as his own wife and lay his claim to Yesugai's legacy. Bekter also bullied and stole food from the others, finally pushing Temujin 
and his brother Hazar to murder their half-brother. When the boys returned to the camp without Bekter, Olalu knew what had happened and flew into a terrible rage. Citing old sayings, quoting ancient words, she cursed and compared Tamujin and Hazar to dogs snapping at their own afterbirth, to a duck eating its own chicks. How dare they act this way while their father still needed to be avenged. This was not the end of their difficulties. Raids were a threat. In one, Demujin was captured and imprisoned. In another, their small horse herd was stolen. Starvation remained a real possibility. But the boys grew strong, taught to hunt and fend for themselves by Hololun. By 1180, Demujin came for Borte, and a fine sable coat intended as a gift for Hololun from Borte's mother was used by Temujin to contact Togru, Khan of the Kyriot, and begin his political career. Hololun's own past came back to haunt them at a similar time. Her married husband and his brothers had nursed their grudge at Esigai, and learning of the son's marriage took the revenge they had been denied against the father. The Merkit captured Borte, and only with Togrul's army was Temujin able to rescue her. The abduction of Holun precipitated years of retaliatory raids, ultimately culminating in the destruction of the Merkit and Temujin's eventual rise over the Mongols. With Temujin's military and political career beginning, Holun and Borte had a highly valued advisory role. Once her own children had grown, Holun adopted orphans raising them to become trusted generals and friends of Temujin. With Borte, Temujin gave Hololun nine grandchildren. Borte must have appreciated Hololun's help in these turbulent years. Hololun also seems to have married for a third time to Menglik, a former retainer of Esugai and a son of Charcha, the lone man who had tried to prevent the tribe from abandoning them. Hololun is rarely mentioned again until 1206, when Temujin proclaimed the Mongol Empire and took the title of Chinggis Khan. Hololun was among those granted families to command her husband Menluk as high council with the prestigious seat to the Khan's right. The dating of our final episode with Hololun is between 1206 to 1210. Among the supporters of Chinggis Khan was the shaman Kokuchu, steeped in the spirit world and supposedly able to walk naked through snowstorms. A son of Mernlik, he built his influence with his stepbrother Chinggis Khan, bestowed that very title upon him, and amassed wealth in a following. Chinggis' brother Khazar complained about him, but the Khan turned a blind eye. Hokutru whispered into Chinggis' ears how Khazar could depose him, and a paranoid Chinggis Khan imprisoned his brother. There had been personal enmity between the brothers for years by this point, and Tringus could not allow any threat to his new empire. Holun learned of this through her adopted children, and leaped to her feet. By then, in her mid-sixties, she donned her high hat, the Berchta, saddled a white camel, and rode through the night. In the midst of interrogating Khazar the next morning, Tringus Han was shocked when his elderly mother appeared, Absolutely goddamn pissed. Chinggis Han, who struck fear across Asia, is recorded in the secret history as cowering before her fury. After freeing Hazar, she sat cross legged, opened her del, and with a breast in each hand, reminded how both were once infants who suckled them. Hazar was spared, but after Hololun returned to her camp, the Khan demoted Khazar from his command of 4,000 to just 1,400. Chinggis executed Hukachu on Borte's urging, but it is unknown if Hololun saw the death of her stepson. Learning of Khazar's demotion and continued mistrust between her sons, Hololun went into a decline and soon died. We can only reconstruct a few episodes from Hololun's long life. For her efforts to protect her family, the Mongols held her in high esteem. In the secret history of the Mongols, Hololun has numerous long passages, and her character shines through. Resilient, resourceful, and with a temper to frighten the world conqueror, Hololun was instrumental in placing her sons and grandsons on a path to dominate Eurasia. 
This has been a part of the Project Her Story playlist. Be sure to check out the next one in our series on important women through history.